welcome everybody uh, to our Friday Star Parties for Fall 2017. And I'm Chuck Higgins uh, with the Department of Physics and Astronomy. And I will be basically just recapping a little bit of what we, uh, uh, our big solar eclipse event here this year. Um, and Irina Paravalova will talk briefly, as well as John Wallen. And I want to prompt you guys to be thinking of maybe uh, some stories or things you want to share if you are uh, able to see this, the, the solar eclipse. So this will be fairly informal. I don't, I'm going to show pretty pictures and some, some videos. And uh, uh, we'll uh, uh, said, kind of have a, have a conversation. I always start this way that uh, um, the Friday Star Party started, I think, in about 1999 with uh, uh, Eric Klumpa. He started doing these uh, himself irregularly. And I came in 2001. And soon thereafter, we started doing them on, on a regular basis. So it's, uh, uh, I guess we're closing in on a 20th anniversary here. Um, so that's, that's kind of fun. Uh, so here's our, our uh, schedule for, uh, for this fall. And I'll bring it up here again. <clears throat> First, I want to go on record, because I'm being recorded, <laughs> that uh, <clears throat> the, our department, Physics and Astronomy, was really the recipient of incredible support from our university for, for the big event. <clears throat> now, we arranged the awesomeness of the event. So we'll take credit for that. And uh, the weather, we'll take some good credit for that. But <clears throat> for those of you who were here for, for our event, we had uh, incredible sponsors and uh, incredible team the Vice President of uh, Marketing, Andrew Oppmann, sort of led the effort to get the stage built and the program developed that, that we had. And you know we had all the buildings open. And it was in the parking, all that stuff. The, the, the grounds crew that mowed the lawns three times a week because of all the rain to get, it, to get us ready to go. It was really a, a great team effort. So, I want to be on record to thank all of them and all my colleagues for uh, uh, what turned out to be one really, really fun event. So it was, it was great for, for all of us. So uh, I'm going to uh, pass the mic microphone to um, Irina, and she will talk just briefly about Next Star Party and ways you can get involved. Thank you, guys. Um, so first of all, how fantastic was that? <laughs> I'm talking about Eclipse. I mean, that's something definitely to remember. So I had my daughter with me, and I was really, really, really happy about having it here that, with me for that. Now, um, the stuff that I want to talk about a little bit is about your possible contribution into the archive of the, if, this event. And where can you find it? First of all, those of you who don't know about this web page, so we have mtsu.edu. That's our university. That's the grounds you are in right now, in case you don't know. And then from here, you can go to physics and astronomy department. You just go and uh, click on P, because physics starts with P, contrary to <laughs> common belief. And then here, on the physics and astronomy, you see that we still have a link to uh, a university web page for Eclipse 17. Obviously, it's already here. It's passed, unfortunately. But a lot of stuff related to Eclipse is still here on this web page. OK? Now, also, from the main page of uh, physics and astronomy department, you can actually follow and and click on the star parties, and that's where we are right now. So today you are participating in the 
star party. So here you can find everything you may find interesting, including that our events are free and open to, for public and you can come with little kids. And we still be okay about that, right? So we also will have, if weather permitted, we have observations outside uh, with uh, telescopes, settings, and stuff. So we also have a map how to get here if you are watching right, us right now, not from the seats in this, in this room. Now, in here also, you can see the little forms that allows you to suggest a topic. We already received several uh, proposals for future topics for uh, uh, coming star parties. So uh, that's what I decided to do, that I will go with most interesting to me, because, well, if I'm given topic, it could be most interesting to me, or maybe most, more often appearing topic in, in the suggestion box. So please give me just a little bit of time to decide on the submissions. So today you probably already gave me some suggestions, or if you want to give a suggestion, here on the table you can find the little cards and pencils, so you can actually write down your proposal and just leave the card, filled out card, and I, we will go through that, okay? Okay, also in here, on this, you can, on this web page, you can find all of the schedules and as of now, you can see that some of these parties already passed, but we can find uh, videos because our awesome audio video service department making these videos and making it available to you. So if you missed some parties, here you can look at them and see what, what was before. Okay? So today, well, it looks like Chuck's supposed to be here in the room, not me. And uh, also, uh, that's a very rough page that we just started, and this is for Eclipse Archive, and that's from the community. So these are the pictures that were taken during Eclipse, and if you want to share some pictures or videos, there is a link in there, it's just a mail to link, so we kind of reserving right to pre, you know, select, or actually, pre-screen some of your submissions because, well, it was eclipse and, you know, dark, darkness fell onto the uh, campus and who knows what, ha what was happening, right? <laughs> so we, and as soon as we will be able to approve it, we will put your uh, pictures, your uh, videos with com your copyright, this person who sent the, uh, this, um, we, will, we will put it online and uh, you will be one of the contributors to this wonderful archives that we hope will be really, really, really big one. Okay, that's just the beginning. It's actually just one day here. Okay, so please uh, think about it. If you can contribute, please do so, because that's definitely was something that everybody want to share. That was an amazing experience. Okay? Um, thank you very much, and I think I'm done. Thank you. So that's all Arena's work there, getting all these web websites uh, set up for us. So we definitely appreciate that. And are we back to me here? Yeah, yeah. okay. So I'm just going to go through uh, a few pictures that... Um, uh, Larry Burris here on, uh, from journalism, I didn't realize he took these pictures. He sent them, sent them to me, and I thought it was a friend of his that, <laughs> or a colleague of his that took these, and it's actually Larry. So these are from him. I'm going to turn the lights down just a, an, another notch so you can see some of these. Um, and so this is right here on campus, and uh, the partial phase, and... Right before totality, you can see some of the beads there, uh, the, the surface of the moon, the, the unevenness of the surface of the moon there, and then a wide, wide screen view. I don't know about, about you guys, uh, if, if you were here in, in Murfreesboro, it did not get as dark as I was, was expecting. Um, I, I knew we were close to the edge of the path of totality, but it, and we were all looking south, so there was 
fairly bright sky to our south. So it didn't get quite uh, uh, as dark as I was expecting. And here's a few, few more from Larry. Really nice, yeah. Very good. That one in the upper right, the diamond ring, is beautiful. A really nice job there. And you can see uh, that's a prominence. I've got a couple more images of that uh, later, but that's a prominence right above the, the, the diamond of, uh, on the ring there on the, <clears throat> the right side. That's a western side, western limb of the sun. You can see a, a, a prominence. Yeah, and that's Regulus, just to the left of the sun there in, in the sky. So that's in Leo, constellation Leo. Um, what kind of camera do you use? Do you know? Um, I do not know what kind of camera. Uh, I'd have to ask him. And that may be something um, I'll talk to Irina about, that uh, if people submit images, then we could maybe put... Oh, you're still here. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so maybe we can uh, put down if they want to fill out what uh, what kind of camera or, or that they used or or some equipment. We can provide that and, too. And you know the lens, the camera. You know, yeah. Some, some Exposures. They, that's not uncommon to see sometimes when a picture is taken. They will also talk. You know. People yeah. try to accumulate as much information as possible, but you know, sometimes people just don't want to share the, this information. But what yeah. we can definitely guarantee is that all of your copyright will be observed. Mm. Yeah, if they provide it, we'll, I think we should put it, Absolutely. put it there. Yeah, I think that'd Absolutely. be great. So depending on how much processing is done on the image, uh, most cameras will record on the image. That's for sure. Here's the camera, and here's what the lens was, and here's the exposure, and that's nice. Mm -hmm. that's, that's for sure. But uh, another thing that unfortunately is that we cannot put images, very heavy images, really good resolution images on our web page because it's uh, web uh, restricted. Mm -hmm. uh, but definitely we will have archive of the very good resolutions and, you know, quite, you know, hefty images. So you can that's actually yeah. request some. Yeah, so especially uh, longer movies and things, they get, they get very, very large. It's, it's kind of tough to uh, move those around. Um, this was uh, uh, Stephanie's a student here, and she was up with um, Dr. Robertson up in Robertson County. Um, not named after him, I, I don't think. <laughs> Maybe his relatives of some uh, long ago, but... Uh, she took a, a, a telescope up there, and she took a, a cell phone camera through the eyepiece of the telescope. So I thought some of those turned out pretty good. And they had a, a good view up in uh, near, near Kentucky. Oh, let me go back. So here is the uh, Daily News Journal cover page there. I don't know if this was in print or not. Did anybody get uh, a copy of the... Uh, was it uh, for the 21st? Was it this image? And Really? Oh, that's neat. I wish I had a copy of that. Yeah, I just got a copy of that. Yeah. <laughs> but a uh, nice photograph of the crowd here on campus. That's uh, before, before totality. And then there's a a few images of folks out and around. I should have asked how many of you were here on 21st. So most of you. Where were you guys? At home, but yeah, we're close. Home, but oh, we're, you were, we're here in, in town. Yeah, we're yeah. just south. And who was not here? Where were you guys? Where? Spring City. I don't know where Spring City is. Oh, Knoxville. So you were in the path of totality? Yeah, we were in Marathon. Good, good. And you had good, good weather? It was clear. Ah, nice. <laughs> there was a few people that got unlucky. Uh, who else was not here? Where were you? I was in Lenore City. It was kind of on the edge. Oh, Lenore City, yeah. Yeah. Did you get a good view? Wonderful. And how about you? You're in Memphis. So you just got the partial view. Yeah. Oh, it was cloudy there? Oh, that's too bad. 
Yeah, yeah. You, you got to have some good luck on these things, that's for sure. Here's a few of the um, uh, MTSU uh, photo services images. People having fun on campus. And then this is, uh, they took a camera and just pointed it uh, during totality and got a few, uh, a few nice images there. Really beautiful corona. I'm going to let uh, uh, John Wallen come up and I've got a few more images. These are NASA and, and other places around the country I'll show after John, but I want to let him talk about his experiences here and show some cool photographs. So, of course, this is where everything was. I was, I was going to talk a little bit about um, the eclipse from a slightly different perspective. And um, the perspective that I had kind of as an astronomer going through this is a little odd because you know, we kind of noticed that we were in the edge of totality here. Um, and I think Rob was the first person that said, hey, we should, we should set some telescopes up. <laughs> and um, it kind of grew from there. Um, but we're, if, you know, when I first saw this, I didn't know exactly how much time it was because we're so close to the edge, right? It, it looks like you get about three seconds of totality, but the way it drops off is, you know, we get a lot more than that because uh, otherwise we probably would have gone other places. Um, just a couple of eclipse photos. This was uh, actually taken by one of my friends. Uh, this was taken by my friend Tom Beach. Um, and uh, this is, I don't know, yeah, this is an, an older, I, this one I saw in one of the, online journals. I'm going to kind of skip over it. Uh, obviously, clouds are bad, so we're happy we didn't have clouds. Uh, this is a great one. This was in the astronomy picture of the day. Uh, so this is uh, one of the ones that, that really came out. The thing that I like about it is if you look carefully at it, you can see the surface of the moon in the center of it. So the, the light's coming, reflecting off Earth, reflecting off the moon, coming back, and you're seeing the surface. So if you take a long enough exposure, you can, you can actually see the craters and the maria and the things like that on the moon. So that's not a, a fake image. That's a real image. Uh, there was actually great debate about whether it was a real image or not, but it, it is real. Um, yeah, it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's actually, yeah, I saw the, the conversation going on about that, more about that in a bit. Uh, this is a composite image. This was done, uh, let's see, I'm thinking this, yeah, this was done by my friend Tom Beach. He actually kind of did composite the images and put them together. Um, so this was not just one image. He actually put a whole bunch together. Hey, John? Yeah. Where, where was Tom? Tom was up uh, just on the east side of Nashville. So he was just north of here. Oh, okay. So he's one of my friends that came to visit, but he didn't stay on campus because he wanted more totality, so he went north. <laughs> yeah. And this is a composite he made as well. So this is actually a bunch of different images showing as you change exposures the different things you get. So. During totality, he was basically using his camera, changing exposure, click, change exposure, click, change. So he was able to get this nice uh, kind of stacked image. Um, so I want to talk about uh, a few people. So this is actually my, my undergraduate astronomy professor. Um, and he actually went to Wyoming. So this is one of my teachers. This is Jim Pierce. Um, and uh, you know, he's actually retired now, uh, and he and his family went out to Wyoming to watch the eclipse. So, uh, you know, one of the things that happens with astronomers and eclipses is we all sort of get on email and talk to each other. So uh, I got an email saying, hey, did, John, did you see the eclipse? It seems like it was really close to you. Yeah, yeah, we did. <laughs> We've got a good view. And uh, this is another picture of him. This is Sun. So I used to play, when I was an undergraduate, I used to go to, over to his house for dinner, and I played his, his like, five-year-old son in uh, chess. He used to usually beat me when he was five, so I think he's probably better now. Uh, this guy on the left is my high school astronomy teacher. So this is a guy who took me to an eclipse in 1979. So uh, his name is Dale Gibbs. Uh, he's also a world curling champion, believe it or not. But um, yeah, he actually went to the world championships and won. Uh, he was an alternate, technically. OK, so. <laughs> but still, uh, he, he also went. Uh, down to Nebraska. They had clouds, unfortunately. Uh, this, these were the people in my house. 
Okay, so uh, going from the left, there's me, my wife Catherine, that's Elsbeth, one of Catherine's friends, uh, Tom Beach and Joyce Guzik. Uh, they were my office mates in graduate school. Um, and Joyce is uh, at Los Alamos, she's a lab fellow there, she's directed X Division and some other things in her, her career. Tom Beach is an astronomy professor. Uh, that's Bob Nimeroff and his wife Holly. Uh, Bob does astronomy picture of the day, uh, and he's up at Michigan Tech. Uh, that's my friends uh, Sarah and Brad and their two daughters, Eleanor, or Phoebe and Eleanor. Uh, they're in Florida, hiding from a hurricane right now. Uh, they evacuated on, out of Fort Lauderdale up to Sarasota, that might have been a mistake. So, I, I don't know. I wanted to show this picture. This is actually one of the later planning meetings that we had. So this was just taken in the meeting. So this is the type number of people. We had up to 40 people in the meetings. Uh, 30 to 40 people that we were showing up once or twice a week in these meetings. Uh, that's Andrew Oppman kind of leading it. He's the one with the big stick. He's very quiet though, so it's good. Um, so, but I mean, there's people here from every possible group on campus, and this really shows the things that went into the planning. Uh, everything from the police to the video production people to the music production to, uh, you know, the, the county schools and the public schools. All these different people came together to make this event happen. This was not just our department. It was a wide spectrum of people that, that came to make it, make it all work. Uh, and we did planning meetings for, for months before. Apparently, I was bringing the peace. Yeah, you were actually, yeah. <laughs> Chuck was trying to calm us down and okay. say victory. I think it was a victory sign. It was a victory sign, if I remember that right. So, um, This is the, some of the volunteers. This doesn't capture all the volunteers. This is what I got that morning. It's the morning of the eclipse. We had roughly 30 undergraduate students, uh, I think, showing up. It was 20, 20, 20, 25, I think. Yeah, so it was this massive number of people. They did the telescope work. They came out and set up all the things for the, the public. They were doing this, this huge amount of work. Uh, they did get free t-shirts, so, you know, it's not like we didn't pay them. So, okay, we didn't pay them. We gave them free t-shirts. Uh, this is actually the morning. Uh, just before. So this is actually what it looked like just before the eclipse takes place. Uh, you know, when I was walking across campus just before 8 o'clock in the morning, you know, everything is kind of very calm. Uh, they're doing the last bit of setup here. Um, uh, these are all my friends sitting on the lawn, so uh, just kind of happily enjoying the, the, the nice shade. And this is what it sort of turned into, right? So the crowd just got crazy. Uh, this is a picture I took from the stage, uh, right about totality. So this is actually uh, how busy it got. So just crazy increase in the number of people coming to campus. Everybody was kind of hiding inside that day because it was 95 degrees, right? So it's really hot out. I love this photo. I did not take this. I love this photo because uh, it just captures it. And so does this, right? This, <laughs> the thing that I remember most about the eclipse is the screaming, okay? <laughs> I, I, everybody just went completely crazy. Uh, and this is actually about three hours after the eclipse. <laughs> so so it, just kind of, it just kind of peaks up and goes back down again. Uh, but this is the same thing. Three hours after the eclipse, this is what it looked like on campus. So I want to show a couple of quick things here. This is actually the, the next total eclipse on Earth. It takes place in 2019. And let me show you a couple things on this. So let me see if I can click on it. Oh, yeah, okay. But it's loaded and chrome. Yeah, okay. Find the tab and chrome, and it's there. Find the tab. Yeah. Uh, NASA Total Eclipse. Yeah, here we go. You've got labeled as a road trip, but can you actually drive? Or you can? Uh, turns out you can. You can. <laughs> you have to really actually want to. <laughs> so this is the path of totality. The thing that I want to point out is it goes through something called La Serena. And it goes to also the, right near the center, just beyond that, there's a little mountain called Saratololo. And I'm gonna switch over to this, I think. Uh, so at Saratololo, yep, there we go. Is it upside down? Yes, it is, okay. So at Saratololo, there's this observatory, Saratololo Inter-American Observatory. They have a four meter telescope there. Uh, so I've actually been there to Saratololo. Uh, I went there actually five times. This is a picture. So not a very good picture, but still, I'm the one on the right. So, um, and Saratololo Inter-American Observatory is uh, a great place uh, to do astronomy. And they have an eclipse going right on top of them. So uh, let me just show you 
a couple pictures. This is actually, this, the t first one I showed you is a four meter. This is actually the 60 inch telescope, which is still operational. One of the things Saratolova was famous for is the way that you got around the mountain. So this is a fleet that they had. All these had you know, roughly 20,000 miles because you were just going from the, the place where you slept up to the observatory all the time. And they get uh, two minutes of totality. The sun's going to be 15 degrees above the horizon. And I don't know if you can see that. That's a view of it. That's a view towards sunset, towards the sea. So it'll be over the mountains, over the sea, just about 15 degrees above the horizon in the late afternoon. So I'm thinking road trip. Who's in? <laughs> uh, it's it's going to be really fun. Uh, so I mean, and I, my wife and I are probably are like 80% sure we're going to go. The question is like, are we going to bring a group or not? So um, you know, it might be really fun to do it either either as a class or just as a trip from NTSU because I think that'd just be awesome. So um, next one here, okay, 2024. Yeah, we can go to Carbondale. <laughs> But it turns out Carbondale doesn't have mountains <laughs> so, or an ocean. It's really lacking both of those. So anyway, I just kind of wanted to, to show you this. It's, you know, the clips for me, it was like, like there was really personal elements of it. Like, you know, talking to my old high school astronomy teacher and my, 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 the professor that I really worked with um, and having friends like from across my life come and live in my house. Um, and you know, that doesn't happen that often. You know, the last time all those people were together was my wedding, and that was a while ago. It was about 20 years ago. So you know, that's, that's a, the thing that I, I kind of really think about. It. And the other thing that's just a vivid memory is literally the screaming, watching the crowd. When I was up on the stage, I, the first thing I did is looked at the eclipse. And then I realized, OK, I want to look at the binoculars. I grabbed the binoculars. I looked for 10 seconds. And then I watched the crowd. And that was just, that was too fun. That was the thing I really, really enjoyed. Uh, just watching the reaction and watching the wave of reaction go across the crowd. So, um, so I'll turn it back to, to Chuck here. All right. Thanks, John. I agree. And I will jump right in, too. That's a good segue into... Um, MTSU... This is our recorded event. So some of you who are there, this will be familiar. And those who, of you who are not here, let's see here. If I get sound, that'll help. Yeah. So this is a live, was a live image from our observatory out here. So we were streaming that all day. Oh, yes. Yeah, the sun was uh, fairly active that day, which was really fun for me <laughs> because I had radio telescopes pointed at the sun to record solar radio bursts and the sun was active, and there was a total eclipse. <laughs> it's like, how, do, how does this happen? This is wonderful. And uh, preliminary analysis of some of the data that I took, it looks like the moon did block some of these solar uh, radio emissions from reaching uh, Murfreesboro, which is really, really fun. But yeah, so the, those, are, uh, those are sunspots. And uh, I'm skipping ahead because this is uh, our this president. This is a special time for us as we wait for the great Tennessee eclipse. President McPhee, I'll welcoming everybody. And this event, ladies and gentlemen, has been designated as one of the official site of NASA, our space program in the nation. One of only six. In We're pleased in Tennessee. to have all of you with us, but I would like to just recognize some special guests. We have two members from our board of trustees, Chairman Steve Smith and his wife, and Trustee Andy Adams Oops, somebody, and his wife. I'm going to skip on ahead. For folks, of course, this event is brought to you by the College of Basic and Applied Sciences 
under the academic leadership. So this is Andrew Ottman. He was the one who put put this whole event together. He he headed headed the the big team there. So he did a great job. A promo is Mark Burns. How about it, Go. Oh. All right, Dr. Henderson. So right. this guy is the Earth, right? He is the Earth. He is the Earth. Now where does the now, Earth need to go? Oh, I think what I need. I need a moon. You need a moon. Well, what? So what I need something. Need a moon. I need something like a, a baseball. You sign. need a baseball. Ladies and gentlemen, the coach of Blue Raider baseball team, Jim McGuire. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, Doc, you got the moon and you got the Earth. What's going to happen right. next? We got the Earth. We got the moon. Now we're gonna get the separation right. So let's come over here together. All right, so we got the earth, we got the moon. Now we need to put the moon in the right place. Where does it need to go? Let's go farther. No, farther and farther and farther. Don't One hurt him. More. We, need, we need coach, don't hurt him. A little more, let's say, let's get you that way. A little more, we're getting close. We're getting really close. So you can imagine how difficult it is for that little moon to block the light from hitting that earth over there. So the sun would be on the other side of coach here, right? The sun would be all the way over here at the science building, that's right. And that little shadow has got to go all the way to hit Murfreesboro, Tennessee on that earth, right? Right, right there's like one of the dots on that basketball, exactly. right? Exactly, that went on the left. Wow, right wow. <laughs> That's a that's a neat neat demo there to see the scale of that. So that was uh, that was a lot of fun to get the coaches involved there. And <laughs> so then, how about that? And we yeah. talked uh, everybody has a little science, yeah, safety, totality. At one twenty. So I'm going to skip more. ahead and. See, it's already going to be pretty dark, so you should see the planet Venus out. But if with your goggles on, with your foot glasses on, science is Dr. Robert Fisher. And they also would like, and they would also like the temperature in Totep. Now we're coast to coast. Oh, 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 too far. As we get closer and closer. Here we go. I'll just play a couple minutes of this. What? We are two minutes away from the totality, and just so that everybody knows, it will be as dark as a full moon night. You will be able to see the stars. You'll already see some of our some of our building lights are starting to come on. Look, it's getting darker and darker, folks. All right, folks. You know, John, I, I think it's time for us to stop our commentating until after this event is happening. I'm just still, you've got a countdown clock, what's our time? Uh, we're kind of about uh, one minute. We're at one minute from totality, everybody. Oh, Enjoy God. this day! <laughs> Don't look yet. Time to ring. Keep your glasses on. You can't practice that. I mean, it, somebody, you just had to point the camera and focus it. That was, they did a great job. Do you know who was that uh, camera person that took that? Um, no, I've got time. No? Okay. I have no idea the timing and what she's going to do. Yeah. I love the tour on the southern edge of totality. You can see the chronosphere so much better on the southern edge of the sun. Yeah. Okay, glasses on. Look at that. Glasses on, ladies and gentlemen. 
It's amazing how, how quickly it gets light after that. You know, it's very, very rapid changes. John, John was explaining, uh, well, uh, what, what, when he was up on stage there, he was explaining that. And, uh, and Rob here pointed out, uh, let's see if I can get it. Yeah, so the moon wasn't exactly centered on the sun from our point of view. We're on the edge of totality. So, so the, the moon was closer to the northern side. And therefore, uh, the, the limb of the moon, uh, was, uh, the southern edge of the, of the moon, didn't quite cover up the, the very lowest, lowest, lowest part of the sun's atmosphere, which is called the chromosphere. Chromo for color. So that's, there's a red layer of gas right above the, the, the photosphere. And you can see that very clearly in these uh, images. And there's the, the, the prominence that was on the limb of the sun. So that was, uh, it was a lot of fun. We had a, we had, we had a great crowd, a great time. The atmosphere of the Earth with Ooh. the sun. So wow. the outer part, the white stuff on the top is actually the outer atmosphere, the perimeter versus chromosphere. John, we're going to loop this a couple of times. Excellent. Like that. But this is really a neat capture here, right? That's, that is the diamond ring effect we're talking about, right? Exactly. And, and, I, and I'm seeing a... So we, we did a little uh, uh, post-eclipse and re review, and, and as John mentioned, <laughs> 30 minutes later, the campus is empty. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a very, very warm day, but it was, that was a, 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 a lot of fun. So... The, the videos here, mtsu.edu slash eclipse, if you'd like to go back and, and uh, look at any, any of those parts again, feel free to do so. Well, it is interesting how, how much difference a few miles makes. We had a friend who lives in Murfreesboro, and uh, he figured out it wasn't going to have much totality, so he went to Laverne, up in Laverne, yeah. a little farther north so they could get more time. And, uh, we're south of Murfreesboro, a couple of miles, and totality lasted maybe 30 seconds. 30 seconds, yeah. 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 You so, don't have to see it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's great. That's all that counts. It's, uh, the, um, so we had about a minute and five seconds of totality here. And, of course, the closer you are to the center line, you got to maximum of about two minutes and 40 seconds. But we had great weather here. You know, super clear skies. We got lucky in that regard. So the the, the conditions were were fantastic. You also had the thing about the solar glasses that were not certified and all that mess. It's kind of exciting, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, keeps keeps you on your toes. Yeah, there, there was a few a few people that uh, got some rogue glasses, but we we had plenty here. And I should also mention, I was very happy and, and proud of the fact that MTSU provided this to the community right. absolutely free, right. right? We didn't try to sell you stuff or charge you for parking or, you know, charge you for glasses. All, all here, safe, come and bring your families here. So that, that worked out really, really well. So we were, we were quite fortunate. Uh, and it was, it, as I said, it was a lot of fun. Anybody, uh, I'm going to stop for a moment. Does anybody want to share uh, a story or, or two about their experience? I'm just going to run through a few uh, uh, more professional images that I've found on some, uh, some of the NASA websites and then a couple of videos uh, uh, that we took here on campus and um, from out west, some, some NASA folks. And then... Uh, I want to encourage you to go outside. Dr. Klimpa is out there, and we have a new toy. And hopefully, we have the camera working so you can get a nice view of Saturn tonight. Does anybody want to? Uh, and one more thing the glasses are only good for three years. Yeah, so, so I. You can't use them for the next one. Because 
I, they do. Some of the glasses say they're only good for, for three years. I still have glasses from 2012 from the Venus Transit. Mm -hmm. And they did not say only good for three years on those glasses. So I'm not sure if that's real or not. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that may be uh, the company escaping liability yeah. making an insurance statement i think i think that some of the labeling requirements evolved in the in the run up to the eclipse could could have been uh, because yeah. i had uh, i had a set of glasses that i got i think a year and a half ago because there was going to be a mercury transit i thought I'd, uh, i was going to go to the elementary school with them uh -huh. um, and that wound up being cloudy and so that i had 100 eclipse glasses in my house for a year <laughs> <laughs> um, and as I was being the Eclipse glasses fairy, I had some of those, and I had some of the National Astronomy Club glasses, and, uh, and I, had the, I had some Google glasses, and I was just sort of saying, take some glasses, you know, what, what cover do you want? Mm -hmm. And somebody brought my Mercury Transit glasses back to me and said, this doesn't have all the labels that it said yeah. to look for. Oh, the ISO safety? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yes, this, the ISO safety standard, I think, is a recent thing, yeah. but I, I, I don't had, know about the three year. It had an ISO number, but it didn't have the logo, and that was one of the things right. that people started saying. And then I saw some with the logo and then no number. No right. number, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. Well, and if you, it will encourage you to make a contribution to NPR, National Public Radio, please send us a pair of, of glasses. Oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Next time I'm going to cash in, I'm going to buy a box car full of these things. And go to oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's uh, next time. That's yeah, right. Exactly. Next time. 500 years. We'll do that. Here. Yeah, here. Yeah. Anybody else uh, want to talk about their experience? Yeah. Does anyone here on campus try to observe shadow things? Uh-huh. You want me to show you? Yes, okay. Yeah, that's one of our cool videos. Uh, full disclosure, Mia Culpa uh, let's see, do I have that loaded? Hang on, let me, I gotta go to YouTube on this one. I, John, if you remember this, I said, ah, oh, these shadow bands, they're not that easy to see. We're making too much of a big deal about this. Don't, don't. I, you remember me saying this? Yeah, I, uh, I, I blew that one. So here is. This is uh, some folks over at the library. Um, what's her name? Vic Valerie, Valerie uh, Hackworth, uh, over at the, at the MTSU Library. They set up this. Um, uh, I guess it's a 65. It's, it's not paper, but it's, it's got a grids, grid lines on the paper, and uh, they just had a camera pointing at it. So I'll play this. This is, this is really cool. So we still don't understand why these things happen, but they happen right before and right after totality. Uh oh, hang on. Let's let me skip ahead then a little bit here. Yeah, I'm not going to play eight minutes of this. See him a little bit? Yeah.
Yeah, now you can really start to see them. That's cool. And I'll skip ahead just a bit here. Hit the video quality. Hit what? Hit the video quality. See if you can get with a little less compression. I think that. Uh, the under settings here? Yeah. Um, see if it'll do better than 480. No. 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 Yeah, that other uh, video was, was a little bit grainy too. So uh, I'll, I'll skip ahead just briefly and then we'll cut it, catch them on the, on the way out. Isn't that neat? Kind of look like interference lines. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, we think, um, it's an interference effect of light traveling through the, through the atmosphere. And I like your idea. It's a thermal effect between where the sun is shining in part and where you have the uh, sun not shining. So you, there may be a, a temperature difference between the, the, those that region of air, atmosphere, and that could be, could be causing that. I don't know. It's really an interesting effect. And if, I mean, many, many people. Did, did anybody see them live? I did not. I was looking up. I didn't see it. But many people around me were, were seeing them. Yeah, yeah, if you were on a sidewalk. Yeah, if you were standing on a sidewalk, they were, they were all around you, apparently, here. Well, how do the librarians know how to do this? We got some librarians. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we got some great librarians. No, it's, it's uh, uh, it, there have really been some, some very poor quality pictures of shadow bands. There's not much out there. Mm -hmm. if, you search the, if you search the internet prior, this eclipse, there was not very many good uh, photos out there. And now, yeah, so they just knew to, to take a picture of a, a, a white sheet on the ground, and uh, hopefully you get them. Say oh, sorry. So, so here's a second thought about that. So, um, so I didn't know about this until this eclipse. And I... Um, I didn't either. Because I suffer from no everything disease, I immediately developed an elaborate idea. <laughs> um, that it's that it's mixing between the cool air under the moon and the warm air that's not under the moon, and if you've got ten miles of different temperatures of air mixing turbulently, you'll be able to see the ripples. Um, it's the same thing as you get a, a twinkling. Yeah. It's the same thing that does twinkling. Yeah, but um, the folks who are serious about eclipses all travel to the center line of totality. And so there, the, uh, the mixing is more sudden. 
Yes, it's, it's a shorter We were shorter just time. about three or four miles, five, maybe five miles from the edge of totality. And so we had a longer gradient on either side. Yeah, I, I'm, you know, I'm convinced that. to that too. Okay. <laughs> I, I think it's the length of time coming in and coming out has something to do with it, but I don't think, that, I mean, the atmosphere is, takes a long time to respond to temperature changes. So it takes a long time for these conductive things to take place. So I don't think it's that, but I think it could be atmospheric convection. But um, I was going to mention something about the library. But the library had, had a makerspace where they actually have 3D printers, they have CNC machines. Right. This is a makerspace group in yeah, so the library. Yeah, this is the group doing that. So they actually had uh, some temperature probes, and they, had, they actually built a bunch of things for the eclipse. So, yeah, right. Um, yeah. They were, they were uh, highly motivated <laughs> to get to get some of this stuff done. But that was, uh, that was fun. And, um, so you saw them where you were? Yeah, we were, we had a two minutes and 34 seconds where we went. Oh, and you saw them there too. Yeah. yeah. And um, that's what I was wondering was whether or not they lasted longer here or they were darker here because we were farther now. I, I don't know. So do you? What do you think? You saw our movie. <laughs> it seems like they were longer, but I think they were darker where we were. But it's hard to tell too from the video. Because yeah. We tried to take a video of our camera and then I had another camera set up on another sheet, but it was too low, so you couldn't see any of the fan. Right, right. Very good. Anybody else have uh, any witness anything interesting besides the sun being blotted out? Yeah. I was in Burnaby, and we saw the sunset all around us. Yes. Mm. Yes. Cool. Yeah. yeah, but so, so uh, w one thing during eclipses is that you see uh, the, the, the shadow is only 70, 70 miles wide uh, or thereabouts. And so if you look uh, on, on the horizon, you will see regions of the Earth atmosphere that is not in the uh, path of totality. So you'll see some brightness, bright lights or, or uh, uh, sunlit atmosphere off in the distance, and you can see that all the way around you. Now, as I mentioned before, we were on the southern edge, so our southern sky was brighter than if we turned around and, and, and looked north. I, I looked east and west, and you can definitely tell it was a little bit br uh, brighter look, looking south. But yeah, that's, that's, that's common to see that. The thing is, and you, you, we all know this now, I mean, uh, there's so much happening in a very short amount of time. Oh, look down. Oh, look up. Oh, look this way. Look that way. Watch for this. You can't. You cannot see all of it in, in one take. And, and it's just... That's uh, why 2019 is so critical. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. John has definitely got eclipse fever. And I think it's spread. I think uh, I'm interested in that trip myself. I really am. I, I, I had an amazing experience here as well. Anybody else? Yeah. There was a cloud... Mm -hmm. of campus, and it looked like the, you could see, I felt like I could see the shadow coming. Would that? Of the moon? Yeah. 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 Yes. The cloud that started to get darker and darker and darker, you know, yeah. but we don't have the distance like we have out west. That's right. I'm sure you, that's what you saw. That if you have, you're lucky enough to get some clouds off in the distance, that's where you can really see that shadow of the moon has come flying, you know, ac across the atmosphere. And I did not see it this time. I looked, but I could not see that, or clearly make out that, that shadow coming across. But yeah, if you've got the right angle and, the, and a cloud in the right spot, you can definitely see that, uh, see that effect. That's neat. Yeah, Samantha? Uh, during the event, Andrew Altman said that they had video of the, the cloud going across our campus, and they were going to replay on the screen. We didn't catch it. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I haven't seen that. Yeah, okay. so, so maybe we didn't, exactly didn't get it. He thought they had it, and then they never didn't replay it. Okay, the, I, I have not seen that if it's, if it's there. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we didn't get it. We got a lot of shadows on the paper, on the papers, and it really Oh, right, right. I, I had, um, so the, the crescents yes, the from crescent. the partial clips. Mm -hmm. I forgot to upload those to my, um, my presentation here, but they were all over the ground, right? Any, any, any uh, standing under any tree, you've right. got the pinhole camera effect, and you get all the little suns, crescent suns, 
during the partial phases, Calendars. showing up all over the ground. Calendars. And you can do it with your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can use... Like like um, actually, I think <laughs> on our web page, let's see, where is our web page here? Star Party, Eclipse Archive. Yeah, so there's one there. So yeah, somebody somebody made a little uh, pinhole, and so you're you're seeing crescent suns. Yeah, uh, Eric Klumpa, he brought a colander, uh, and and he got a picture of all the little. Uh, Suns on the ground from a colander, or his daughter brought it. I don't, I don't remember, but so that's uh, that's kind of fun. Anybody else uh, want to share? Yeah. Just speaking of animal behavior, you know, there was all that that hype about what the animals were going to do. My cat was on the front porch and never moved a spot. <laughs> <laughs> but if you watch the the. Uh, Elephant sanctuary in Homewald, they have elecams that constantly are, are monitoring. You can go online and watch the elephants. Really? And so they did that. But unfortunately, during totality, I mean, when it was dark, the cameras didn't work because <laughs> they're, the cameras that are just set up to follow the animals. Oh, right. But I guess they got the elephants, who are very intelligent creatures, got a little agitated, but it lasted for just a few seconds. So. Yeah, right, right. We don't know the long-term damage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because they never forget. But apparently cat, <laughs> cat, cats are not affected, at least initially, yeah. Uh, I know um, I did not uh, see them. I heard the cicadas here on campus, mm -hmm. and some of the video you'll hear, people saw uh, fireflies that came out because on campus they're here. They're out anyhow, huh? and they just don't glow until night. So, I mean, until it's dark, you can't see them. Yeah, yeah. That's a question. Yeah. I don't know the answer. Do, do fireflies light up during the day, or I'm, probably not? I'm, I don't think they do. It makes a good thing to see a cop. Yeah. <laughs> um, Anybody else have animals doing behaving strangely? Oh, I saw a bunch of dragonflies in the 15 minutes before the eclipse. And I, I don't think I've ever seen a dragonfly on this campus. And I saw four or five you know, great big ones uh, buzzing around on the trees. And then after the eclipse, they were gone. Interesting. Huh. They were dragonflies, not cicadas? Uh, yeah, so long, skinny body and four wings. Well, it was also very hot and humid. Yeah, and yeah. Very yeah. Yeah. I I measured uh, I moved a thermometer out of a porch. I lived down South Murfreesboro, off South uh -huh. Church Street. And my farm said only measured a five degree drop. And I was wondering if it was any uh, greater on campus. No, or, I think it was five or six here. Yeah. 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 Um, there is a slide I I have. Uh, I found this on online. This is in Idaho. Yes. So you can see the, uh, what did I say? That's about 12, 10, or 10 or 12 degree drop in, in Idaho. So that's, that's kind of cool. But the humidity here, much higher, is not, yeah. not as much. But it was noticeable. Did, did, did you guys notice the temperature change? Oh, yeah. It was absolutely. Definitely uh, was noticeable. Yeah. And it was so hot out, that was welcome, really. So let me uh, run through a few more slides. I, I, again, I just found some, some um, random images from uh, the NASA. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I was going to ask. Um, my sister and I were trying to take pictures of the sun right before the eclipse. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we don't really know anything about cameras in terms of your cell phones. Um, but we noticed that like, when we were trying to take the picture, some really weird actors were like, we would point our phone at the sun, and then like multiple suns would pop up like on the screen. So 
Yeah, I think that's some internal reflections happening in your in your camera lens and things. I saw that too. Some some other videos people had. Yeah, it's really hard to do it. You, 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 it's it's you need good equipment, as you'll see in some of these uh, some of these pictures. Yeah. Really? So, just to be clear, that is. Okay, that's uh, that's the first confirmation uh, uh, that I've heard of a dead soldier in terms of a I'm cell phone. I'm interested in purchasing the ruined iPad. I'll pay a scrap price. <laughs> Ten bucks. Yeah. What about you? Do you have any satellite views of the shadow movie over the years? I did not. Uh, Put one up in in my my group of images that I'm going to show here, but they 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 I have seen them, so they uh, I don't know if it's a space station or or satellite view shows the shadow coming across. Yeah, they're out there. I don't have one here, unfortunately. Uh, so this is uh, out in Oregon. So uh, NASA was set up out there with a video camera. Just some pretty pictures. There's also uh, Oregon. Totality, and then an image, zoomed in image of that prominence. That's really nice. <clears throat> so my impression of totality, it was way better than I expected. <laughs> I had no idea that I was going to see that much detail with my eyes of the corona. I was expecting, you know, these, uh, I was expecting, uh, let's see, well, maybe this, you know, with my eyes, not, not much fine detail, just kind of diffuse light to make up the corona. That's what I was expecting. I saw, I, none of these pictures do it justice, as you, you, you know. But a picture like this is a pretty decent representation of what, what, what I saw. Just the amount of detail, the amount of, we call them streamers, and the ones that are shaped like a, 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 a helmet come together, so helmet streamers. And this is, this is a very nice photograph, and it shows uh, detail, what is that, four solar diameters out from from the sun, or th three, or, or thereabouts. I didn't see it that far with my eyes, but it certainly I saw it out a, a solar diameter or a little bit more. And just absolutely clear, blew me away how much I was able to see without, I, I expected to have to, 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 have to need binoculars to see that kind of detail. Uh, to see it naked eye was really, really cool. And I did not see it kind of whitish like this. I saw varying shades of blue around the black sun. So... Are there concentric rings of processing artifacts in that photo? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm assuming so. And I, I kicked up the contrast. Yeah, it's on the left. Uh, yeah, this... A bit but yeah, you can see these uh, these kind of these rings here. I kicked up the contrast on this so you could see the uh, yeah, okay. the streamers a little bit better. That's pretty from Sparta. There's a really nice one out out in Oregon. There's the bright star Regulus, and I think John showed a similar picture like this so you can see the the dark side of the moon here. Um, some detail. Now these, um, m in most cases, you have to take multiple images and stack them to get to get this kind of kind of detail, like this here. Incredible. So there are. Um, it's a very pretty image, wide field. Montage out in Oregon, that's, that's cool. There's another picture from Oregon, beautiful. Just amazing detail. And 
and uh, these eclipse chasers that see these things multiple times. And every time they see a solar eclipse, the, the uh, corona is different. And there, it varies with the solar cycle as well, 12-year, 11, 12-year solar cycle. No, it's another star. Sunspot. Yeah, so that was this, the, the, the bright star nearby. So there's Regulus on the left. There's another one. Uh, yeah, there's another star. I'm not sure which one that was. Yeah. Venus was. Venus was pretty, pretty far. Did you guys see Venus? During, yeah, I, I definitely saw Venus. I could not see Jupiter, Jupiter here. Jupiter was about the same distance away on the other Yeah, side. I looked. I just I couldn't find it, and I decided I didn't want to. I wanted to go back and <laughs> look at the sun again. <laughs> so this is a, 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 a neat set of images. So this, this is from space, from Solar Dynamics Observatory. And they only, uh, so the spacecraft only got a partial eclipse. So this is the view from... Spacecraft and visible light, ultraviolet light. Look at the uh, active sun near the sunspots. And then more ultraviolet light. Incredible detail uh, around the sunspot. So you can see the magnetic field lines. So that's hot plasma that follows these looping magnetic field lines around the structures that make up uh, sunspots. Ah, so this is uh, Eric Klumpa's, Dr. Klumpa's video. I'll play it, it's uh, pretty nice. So he had a, he had a, a fairly inexpensive camera just set up on a telescope that was just tracking. I mean, this is the first time he's ever done it, and so he just put this together. I don't know the quality of these screens here. This looks, well, it looks a little better here. So here the cicadas in the audience. Yeah. 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 Isn't this creepy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is right next to the MTSU Observatory. Coming back. It's coming out. So this camera had everything kind of auto exposed. So it was trying to trying to adjust as it was taking taking uh, the video there. So that's why it's a little little grainy. But I thought that turned out pretty pretty good. And I know we're running a little long here, but I've just got. This video is kind of cool. This is from NASA. You see that? International Space Station. Isn't that cool? That's slowed down a little bit. A little bit. 
And I've got one more. This is quite long, so I won't play the whole thing. I got one more. This is out Oregon. Anybody see the airplane flying by right before totality? Here? There was hey! It. Hey! Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> so they're taking the filter off of their, of their camera. Yeah, this one doesn't go until after totality, so I'll skip over that. And uh, ah, I I literally uh, had so much fun during the eclipse. A lot of work preparing for the eclipse. Again, uh, the, the 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 folks that uh, volunteered and and were part of the MTSU event was, was was great. I can't stop talking about it. I I I would stay here another two hours. But I won't keep you. Um, please vote for the star party for next time, if you will. You have a question? Uh, did anybody get a final count of how many people were here? I have heard eight to ten thousand were on MTSU campus, so I'm saying nine. <laughs> yeah. That's because that's what you had in the pool, I think. So no, I had I, I had fourteen. Okay. Yeah, I overestimated how many. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I had a question uh, about how does the uh, eclipse affect the aurora, or does it? Like aurora borealis and much Does it actually affect? It shouldn't because the, um, I, I guess if, if you had uh, the path of totality went close to the poles, mm -hmm. it could affect there because you, you, you would uh, change the, um, um, the plasma. Uh, uh, near the near the regions where you get the aurora, so that could affect it. But here, closer to the equator, it, it shouldn't shouldn't affect it. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I didn't know if it would make any difference. Just kind of like the radio stuff you were doing. Yeah, yeah. So it, it'll affect the plasma locally, but a long way away, probably not. Yeah. The aurora is trapped particles, um, and so they approach the Earth much more slowly than they've got a long dwell time in the magnetic field. Would it affect it two days later? <laughs> um, uh, it affects the ionosphere. Again, it, it, in, in totality, it does. Yeah, there, just like you have a day-night effect for, for ionization recombination, you get ionization recombination locally. I don't think it would be much different than any other new moon. Oh, OK. Uh, so the best auroras are when it's Winter time in the northern, you know, winter time wherever you are, in far north latitude where there yes. isn't any sun. And you get a. Eclipse at that time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. And you get, you know, a, a solar flaring yeah. that's taking place. Yeah. Because I think there were some visible even in Arkansas last night because of this solar storm. We have had a very yeah, active yeah. week this week of the sun. It's been amazing. The sun is. There was a there was a uh, X-ray flare that was this, uh, made the top 15 in intensity of all time on Wednesday. So it's uh, we're we're probably going to get some some pretty good aurora um, over the next couple of days from, from that. Uh, I don't I don't I don't know. I, I haven't looked at those, but sometimes they do they do come this far south. But it's if they do. You have to have a good sky, clear sky to the north, and what you will see is a just a reddish hue 
to the, the, the sky, looking, looking northward. The, this far south, they just get really, really diffuse, and it's, it's hard to see them. It's even harder with your eye, because they're not very bright. You know, with a camera and an exposure, you might be able to photograph them and, and, and pick them up better. We got, we got, uh, I was just looking, we got the KP-8 in the last 24 hours. Basically, yeah, it's, nine, so that's like it's, uh, as I said, it's been a very, very active week yeah, on, on the sun. Any other comments or questions? Solar eclipse related or otherwise? What is your new thing that you're going to show tonight? Ah, so um, Dr. Klumpa is outside with a new telescope, a small telescope that's going to is, is attached to our large telescope, so it tracks, and it is good for planetary and looking looking at planets and the moon, long focal length, so you get good magnification out of it. So we might be a little bit late to actually see a live view of Saturn. It's getting low in the sky, but he told me he was going to take some pictures before we went out there. So if you have time, go out and see if we got it. I, I, I have no idea. I'm putting a lot of pressure on uh, Eric. New solar eclipse camera that we use for the eclipse, too. So we use, I think you took the camera. Yeah, yeah. So we have a new camera and a new telescope. The, the camera, the solar eclipse that, that we use for the solar eclipse is now on a longer focal length telescope to get better, better magnification for planetary objects, planetary and lunar objects. So go out and see that. Thank you for your time. I appreciate Thank you coming. You. And uh, come back again next month. And uh, I don't know what we're going to be talking about. You have to tell us. Thank you.